Hello and welcome to this week's stock analysis. Um, I would like to show you a new way to find interesting stocks to analyze, you, which you might not know. Uh, so I'm here at uh, Forbes.com, a big financial magazine as most of you will know. Uh, they have this big button here, it says lists. And if you click on that, you find a couple of interesting lists here on the right side. Uh, like the world's richest people, that's what they're known for. Uh, that's that's the most um, yeah well-known list they uh, Forbes hosts. But there are also company lists. So, for example, the 2,000 leading companies in the world, most trustworthy companies, and best small companies. And they have seven more here. But let's just uh, click on the most trustworthy companies of America. And why is that interesting? Because um, we want our companies to, that we invest in to have trustworthy management and they've already um, yeah done the sifting for they sifted through all these companies and uh, decided that these are the 100 most trustworthy companies there's no guarantee of course that they're correct but at least we can um, um, yeah use this as a start for our own analysis so the most trustworthy large cap companies of 2014 and it says that number one is ocean Oceaneering International. So let's just uh, look that company up and um, see what uh, what it shows us. Um, I, I've shown you this website before, fool.com. I know that the ticker symbol for this company is OII. Here it is, Oceaneering International. So let's see what uh, Ah, here it says the COPS rating, which is sort of the rating system of this website where everyone can, all the, yeah, they call it players, everyone who's registered here can vote on how good they think the stock is, if he, they think it will outperform or underperform. And as you can see, most have said this stock is likely to outperform, that's why it has a five star rating here. It says that it's a global oil field provider and they uh, provide uh, services and uh, products for the oil and gas industry and especially deep water uh, industry so okay well that's interesting let's see what um, as you can see here this is the the red line is the S&P 500 and you see that uh, Oceaneering International has underperformed uh, over the last year so let's see uh, if we can figure out some more about this stock. So we have a spread the, the spreadsheet here, um, value spreadsheet, and I entered the ticker symbol here. Uh, you can enter whatever ticker symbol you want, and the, the um, spreadsheet just collects the data. For example, if I input uh, DLB for Dolby, it will get the, the data for this particular stock. Uh, but we're interested in Oceaneering International. So let's see what uh, you see the result here 85 out of 100, which is a very good score. Uh, it has some, um, uh, yeah, orange flags here, so to say, and, and some red flags. So let's, uh, let's look at this, uh, take a little closer look. Um, I always like to go to the graphs first because they give you a very visual way to show what's going on over the past 10 years. Uh, what we see is that earnings per share have been increasing uh, nice and um, yeah quick uh, pretty pretty fast at a pretty fast rate actually uh, however the free cash flow which is the blue line here seems a bit inconsistent and the primary concern I have is that almost all of these uh, 10 years free cash flow has been significantly lower than the earnings per share and for example the classic case of Enron uh, they were also posting growing um, earnings while they were actually losing money. Well, they, uh, this particular company has positive free cash flow, but it's not completely in line with the uh, earnings per share. So that's something to take into account when you analyze this stock because it might be, and I don't say it's the case with in this uh, with this particular company, but this could be an indication that a company is manipulating its earnings so be careful of that uh, we see that the return on equity has been above 15 percent which is what we like to see so that's good book value per share has been increasing 
uh, net profit margin as well so that's really really good I mean it has been quite stable uh, the last couple of years but uh, on a healthy 10% uh, level the debt to equity I mean they have zero debt at the moment so that's uh, very um, yeah powerful for a company in the oil and gas industry which is obviously a very capital intensive um, industry so it, it's it's uh, good to see that they managed to pay all these investments they have to make from their from their cash flows um, so that might also be why the free cash flow is a bit low on the low side because they have to invest so much well then let's take a look at the valuation uh, we see very different valuations here so why is that well as we saw I mean this is a PE valuation model and this is a discounted cash flow valuation model and we already saw in the graph that the earnings which is used in the PE ratio model and free cash flow which is used in the discounted cash flow model there's a big gap between these so that's why there's also a big gap in the results of these valuation models now the return on equity valuation model actually gives an even lower estimate so why is that well that's because it uses the sustainable growth rate and uh, for this particular co it, it uses the sustainable growth rate plus which is something I've invented myself actually uh, you can read here that it is a, a conservative and more realistic sustainable growth rate uh, by subtracting depreciation and amortization from net income and adding long-term debt to shareholders equity um, the thing is that this as I said this is a pretty capital intensive uh, business so they that's why this uh, particular growth rate we use here is is on the low side however analysts expect um, the company to grow at 21 percent for the coming five years so let's just enter 20 percent here in this orange override field and uh, what we'll see now is that the valuation is much more in line with what we saw here so let's just assume that this is uh, the discounted cash flow is on the low side because of uh, the, what we saw here in the graph and uh, so we'll focus on these two and just uh, double check we can go to another website I've shown you before uh, jetta.com and uh, if I fill in OII here let's see what it uh, whoops OII here it is we see that um, Jetta says that at the at the current price of sixty two dollars, it's twenty, uh, it's it's around seventeen percent undervalued. Um, so let's see if we if we take these and just take them with a little grain of salt. So let's say seventy five is the uh, is the estimate. Then we see uh, that it is currently, according to the spreadsheet, undervalued um, by twenty percent, which is in line with what we see here, right? so we can have some confidence in our estimate and yeah so I, I think um, if we look at this company we see that the max purchase price is forty six dollar which means if you want a twenty percent return on your investment every year then you should not purchase this stock until it falls below this price um, if you purchase it at the current price you can expect to earn around twelve thirteen percent a year which is still decent uh, however yeah I prefer as I said to earn around 20% a year so I will not purchase this stock myself but I think this is a very interesting company in the oil and gas industry it has a proven track record it has good fundamentals and it's currently slightly undervalued so um, I hope you like this analysis uh, you can find a PDF version of this um, uh, dashboard here um, in the description of the YouTube video and thank you for listening and I hope to see you next week